What are we looking at? It's a light week, but there's some things a brewing around the corner. Is that the right saying? Like I'm in the room adjacent to the kitchen and I hear something going on and I'm like, hey, what's 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 going on in there? And somebody yells back, I'm making coffee. Do you want some? I'm like, not right now, because I'm talking about the toys we have going on. But ooh, later, maybe we'll see what's happening, because that's what we do around here. I'm Robo. This here's the rewind. Let's start things off once again with a little YOLO Park Transformers AMK Pro Series Starscream model kit action. Hey, there's new images. I just go where the pretty promo pics take me. Here's Starscream just soaring through the skies, majestic as can be. Although you'd think his alt mode would be sleeker and swifter for that kind of thing, but this ain't that kind of line. YOLO Park Transformers AMK Pro Series model kits do not transform. What you see is what you get. Uh oh, looks like Megatron has the upper hand. What's Starscream gonna do? Is he gonna run and catch? hour and wait for his next opportunity to try to take over the Decepticons? Hell no, he's got some hidden offense. He's got some nipple missiles, some mipples, or prochestiles, or or how about some bow weep grana weep titty bombs? Can you tell I love this line and cannot wait for Starscream to release? Which shouldn't be too long now. I think it is listed for September. Then we'll go on to talking about the next one, hopefully. While we're talking new looks at old things, today's Target Geek Out revealed Super 7's Thundercats... Oh, deluxe? I guess that's what they're calling these. For lack of a better term, it's lion and monkey and dumbed down from their original Ultimates releases with just the figure and an accessory or two on blister cards. So I guess it goes Ultimates with an exclamation point. And then deluxe, blister cards, retail, less accessories. Papa John's. That all means a cheaper price point of $34.99. Monkey and appears to be the same sculpt as before, but they point out that Lion O is a new sculpt. Is this the body that debuted with the San Diego Comic Con exclusive Light Up Eyes version? I don't know. I lost track of Thundercats a long time ago. I, I look, but once I got the main cast, the big names, I, I quit paying a lot of attention because I didn't know the characters. Saying that, Lion O's the biggest name and I didn't get the light up eyes version. So I'm gonna need this to upgrade the old one I have, because I think I have the original version. And I need Monkey in for custom fodder. The price is right to pop the head off, do some swapping, do some painting, and finally get around to a character that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Why we don't have Thundar figures at this point is beyond me. And don't bring up the Toynami figures. I, I like the look. But I passed on those way back in the day, and now the prices are so high every time I see them at conventions. Plus, that was 20-some-odd years ago. That's practically vintage at this point. Which I hate to say. Anyway, Thundercats Deluxe. Link is in the description. We talked about the teaser pictures for the Bandai SH Figuarts My Hero Academia Bakugo last week, kind of speculating at what it's going to come with, the accessories, knowing full well that we were getting the solicitation this week, which would confirm everything we talked about last week. And it's pretty much what we thought. Interchangeable faces for different expressions. Swappable hands. Blast effects. I did miss that there's an alternate hair piece without the big costume wings, but looking now, that's fairly obvious. So yeah, available for pre-order right now, but that's not all in the world of SHF My Hero. There's also the Plus Ultra Option Parts Set. Just bits and bobs to spruce up both Midoriya and Bakugo, like grander power effects and onomatopoeias. But there's also extra body parts, like Deku's power up hair and his flippy fingers. If you like your Kachan a little bit more relaxed, which is weird to say out loud, there's alternate forearms. But man, I would miss the grenade gauntlets. That is such a part of his costume and persona. But that's okay because they also push those limits with some kind of gun Waldo things. I am so behind on My Hero Academia. This just makes them look 
dangerous as all hell. This is the other end of the spectrum from relaxed, which is exactly what I expect with Bakugo. And I gotta call them by their name just once. The Heavy Mobile Area Suppression Strafe Panzer Equipment. Either way, it makes me like these even more because it strays even further from other companies' offerings so far. And yeah, all of this could have been included with the figures themselves, but that would have upped the price a bit for each, essentially balancing out what you're paying for the two figures separate and then the option part set. Plus, those are the marketing aspect. If you want just one character and then the plus ultra, you get that and then you think, well, I have parts for the other one. I might as well grab it. So, yeah, that's, just, that's that's the situation. Oh, toy companies. You know, like putting a female character that I really, really want in with an animal that I don't really need because I already have a version of it. Well, okay, that is not everyone's situation when it comes to the Hasbro Marvel Legends Crystal and Lockjaw 2 pack. I'm only speaking of my own situation and that's all I can do because I speak for no one else. I have the Mezco 112th Collective Lockjaw. I don't know if I need another one, but I really want Crystal. So what do I do? First, I look at the price. This is $69.99. Ooh, subtract the price of a regular figure, $25, carry the knot. That's $45 for Lockjaw, which is admittedly just a big hunk of plastic. Well, I mean, we collect toys. They're all hunks of plastic, depending on size. Yeah, whatever. It does have swappable faces for different moods. Then there's the powered up and powered down tuning forks. But the part I see most people down on is the legs. There's no knees or whatever that part of dog anatomy is called because I legs, knees, ankles, wrists, paws, shoulders, hips. There does seem to be ball joints where the legs attach to the body at the ankles, paw, wrists, whatever, tail, neck. The problem is we've been seeing G.I. Joe Classified series animals for a while now. Those are so good that when we see anything less than the best, it's a felony. Plus, like I said, there's the existence of the Mezco version, which I had to go back and look, that doesn't have knees either or ankles or tail. That's pretty much shoulders, hips, whatever they are neck, mid torso. It does look a bit meaner and lights up, but I'm also gravitating towards the happy-go-lucky good dog look here. With the swappable back legs, this can sit down. And you can kind of get that with the Mezco, but it's just kind of paws out. This looks like actually sitting down. And I have to remember that the Mezco released four years ago. So secondary market prices, not everyone got it. Not everyone can get it at this point. So. What you're going to have to do is just sit down with your own display and your own wallet, have a long talk about where y'all are going, because no one can tell you that. Don't listen to people on the internet or whatever. Just look at your own situation, decide what you want to do. That's it. Because I don't know what the hell to do now. Man, I want Crystal. Do I need two lockjaws? Is there another place in the display for... The Pet Avengers? The Pet Avengers in humans. <laughs> like I said, don't listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker. It seems I missed the news that pre-orders for the Moto King Flash Bat Cycle model kit opened up at some point because I saw these pictures and I thought, hey, wait a second. Last time I saw these, they were just in plastic color in sprues, kind of prototype-y. These new pictures show Batman and the Bat Cycle in all their colorful glory. So that made me think, oh, that's the whole kit and caboodle. Pre-orders for the set will go up soon. Wait, no, the Bat Cycle's already up for pre-order? Well, dang, by itself? Does that mean this is a preview of Batman going up for pre- Oh. That went up as I was walking out here to record. That's weird that they wouldn't do it at the same time, but whatever. So separate releases for the Bat Cycle and Batman, which is, oh, if you just want Batman, grab Batman. If you just want the Bat Cycle, boop, boop. I still haven't seen Flash, but I did know that Affleck showed up in a blue and silverish gray costume, but I didn't realize it was this blue and silverish gray. I get what they were going for, but seeing it in figure form, I'm kind of like, oh, ooh. Which is weird because I'm a blue and gray Batman kind of guy. In fact, take the colors away and, uh, yep, 
I like that. But then bring the colors back and it, I don't know what happens. So this really isn't for me, but if you're looking for this version of Batman in 112th scale, this may be the only way to go at the moment, I think. Has there been another one? I think there was a DC multiverse, but that's seven inch scale. Mm -hmm. Was there a third party? I think there was a Bat Cycle released at some point, unlicensed, but I, I don't know either way. This does look good for what it is. I just don't personally prefer it. I am still anticipating my first Motto King experience though. I want to build one of these models and I've heard good things about the Christian Bell Batman, but I don't need another Christian Bell. No, so I may go in on the Tumblr when it releases because it's the Tumblr and his bike, whatever that was called. I can't remember offhand at the moment. Or maybe I'll wait around for some of the Spider-Mans, even though I have a ton of Spider-Mans and I just got a great superior Spider-Man. I need something unique in this line so I can build it, see what's going on, and then I'll make decisions from there. While we're talking DC, Batpod. <laughs> that just shot into my head. That's, that's what the motorcycle thing is called. That's coming with the Tumblr, the Batpod. While we're talking DC, McFarlane Toys revealed two new DC Multiverse, I mean, DC Direct Page Puncher figures. I guess if they have a comic book, they're DC Direct, they're Page Punchers. But come on now, <laughs> a multiverse is a multiverse. It's all multiverse to me. Rebirth Deathstroke looks pretty nice, mostly because I recognize it as a Deathstroke, you know what I mean. I like the addition of the Unmasked Slade Head too. A couple of years back, that would have been a variant chase that you'd have to go somewhere else and buy, and then you have two Deathstrokes to have the options. But at the end of the day, this is the same Wilson sculpt that we have seen several times over at this point. It's just in a blue and different shade of orange color scheme. I'm much more interested in this Robin. If I'm not mistaken, this is an all new sculpt. I hate saying stuff like that because, especially for lines that I don't follow super closely, I hate making definitive statements. Sure, the limbs are long, but once again, welcome to DC Multiverse. <laughs> That's just how things are with this series. I mean, page punchers. <laughs> oh man. Best of all, this pairs up nicely with the reborn Batman that is sitting at my Walmart right now or in stock on Big Bad Toy Store, link in the description. I was passing on that Batman, even though I've stopped and admired it several times in the toy aisle. I enjoyed that storyline, but I thought, when are we, it's gonna be a year or two before we even get Robin, oh, right now? Okay, so I can, factor that into my decision-making process. I can pair them up within months of each other. That's my kryptonite. So good job getting them out so close together. But about that Professor Pig mask in this box. Hmm. That seems like a good segue over to McFarlane Toys DC Retro Batman 66 Wave 11. 11 ways of pure cheesiness. And I say that lovingly about the source material, but begrudgingly about the product. Now you know I get it. Hell, I've praised the fact that these are retro style figures with less articulation and soft sculpts. And I still buy them happily. I love my Batman 66 figures. I just got pure Disco Nightwing, and I got, uh, what else? Oh, Alfred. There's a couple of others over there that I haven't opened up. But yeah, give me more. The display is growing. And whoever thought we'd have King Tut or Bookworm? So uh, you can't fault it for that. Because I'll definitely pick up Clock King and Wonder Woman. That's new, unique characters for the shelf. I'll probably grab Batgirl too, because for some reason, I passed on the New Adventures Batgirl, and this seems to be that in a different color scheme. Kind of the Batman 66 interpretation of the New Adventures of Batman cartoon look. Or is this how she appeared in the comic? Because I don't know much about that. It's usually comment section that lets me know, uh, yeah, it was this, this, or this. Batman threw me off until I did a little research and learned that this is how Italian comics portrayed Batman for years, even changing the Batman 66 movie poster to be in these colors. That all makes this figure more interesting and uh, shut up. But then Joker in red doesn't do much for me. Is this an homage to when the color saturation would be blown all to hell in pictures or some TV sets? If it is, I wish the hair was gold instead of green just to complete that look. I'm recording this before the actual solicitations hit, so I'm probably gonna 
stop this, go in to start editing, grab the pictures, and then read the thing. And I'd be like, this is this info, info, info that you didn't know. Coming back around to my disappointment in this line, which stems solely from the fact that I just picked up the DC Multiverse Batman 66 figure and Ooh, ooh, it's pretty good. It makes me want all of the Batman 66 characters in 7 inch scale to match it, but I know that will never happen. So as is, I'm fairly happy with the DC retro releases instead of extremely happy. What, you think I was going to end this on a negative note? You don't know me. Because how can I be negative when DC Retro is giving us the Batman 66 Batgirl cycle? Look at all this glorious 60s goodness. I'm gonna be honest though, I never realized just how tassily and frilly this bike is until I saw it in plastic form. I think that makes me love it and want it even more. It's silly, it's cheesy, it's exactly what I needed to put next to the Batman 66 Batmobile. I do have a sneaking suspicion that the figure is riding the bike side saddle here. They cleverly covered up the legs where you can't see the lower half and there's no way that articulation is going to straddle the bike. But I'm okay with posing it like this too. I'm perfectly happy. All this vehicle talk leads us to the ramen REV or the ramen economical van. This used to be known as the bread car but I can only speculate that Ace got sick of answering questions about does this haul bread and why are you calling it a car? It's a van. Now it's straight to the point. It's from ramen. It's economical. It's a van y'all happy with yourselves. The key point in all this though is economical. The base model is available in black and white and is early bird priced at $99, which seems like a hell of a deal. I call it the base model, but it does all the things you expect a van to do. The wheels roll. The driver, passenger, side, and back doors all open. There's moving armrests. That's luxury, baby. Best of all though, it's just a good looking cargo van that'll fit in with your 112th collection. That is... That's the most important thing. Well, besides the price. The price for what you get here. I mean, we're all thinking the same thing about the black van, right? Just load that thing down with weapons? Mm -mm -mm. But if that's the case, you may need a van with more protection, and that's where the Raider comes in. This gives you a brush guard for the front grille, an armored windshield cover and visor, and then a spoiler for the back. These all attach with magnets, so it's the black van with the accessories that just snap on, or you can take parts and pieces, put it on the base models because those have the magnets too. Those extras push the early bird price to $110, not bad at all. Then finally, $15 more than that for a grand total of $125, you can get the recoil, which may or may not be based on an old TV show. All I can say is that Ramen brought their A game here. Again, these are early bird prices, so if you're interested in any of these, grab it now because October 1st, the prices jump 45 to $55, depending on which option you're looking at. And that's it for this week, so far. I said it was light, but it feels like I've been talking, oh man, yeah, I've been recording for a little bit now. Special thanks to the Nobots, the Patreon, which I wanted to bring up because next week's gonna be weird. I'm guessing there's gonna be some toy news of some kind throughout the week, but then Hasbro PulseCon is Friday. That's just a wrench in the schedule here in the Robo Cave. In fact, Let's do this. Uh, it's been a while. I don't even know if I remember the number. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I talk to Mr. Bro? Mr. Hasbro? Oh, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. This is Robo. 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 Yeah, I'm shooting the rewind right now. Look, I thought we had a deal where you weren't going to schedule things on Friday because I can't... It, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> Just because you're a multi-billion dollar corporation, you're not going to bow to the whims of some asshole on the internet? 
that's fair. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll see you next Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Never again? Okay. He hung up. So if you're on the Patreon, you're used to getting the rewind the day before. Sometime about five, six o'clock central time. It may be later than that next week. The schedule's gonna be a little screwy, but we'll still be right here next Saturday with the regular rewind for sure. Another thing that may put a kink into the schedule soon is Legions Con because I'll be attending that. I just did my first deep dive into Mythic Legions and great googly moogly. That's, why did no one tell me they were that good? No, I had a lot of people tell me that they are good but I guess I'm jumping in with the updated articulation and everything. So, I, um, and then I need that. Oh, I need some demons. I need some vampires. I need some horses, some bears. And oh my, oh, the, this is a dangerous pit. We're gonna have to have a talk, buddy, because I know, I know last week was hurtful, very painful, but man. We're gonna have to get another job. I'll be wandering the floor there, checking out the customs and the horseman booth and other people's stuff and this and that. It's a convention. I love it. From what I hear though, it's very tight knit like PowerCon, which I absolutely love. It's just focused. You're there. And if you're there, you're in it. You're your family. Not love not like Olive Garden. Your toy family. So we'll see. I think that's still a little ways out. So we'll mess up the schedule next week get back on track for some time or a month or so and then off schedule again but that's okay it's all toy news it's 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 good it's all good anyway bye